So here we've got examples of our ripening stages of our tomato crop. Down here at this end, we don't wanna go through and harvest at this point because the fruit's gonna go through and be too old and too developed. And what happens is, is that it sends signals to the plant that it's done its job, it's made its seeds, and it doesn't need to work as hard anymore to go through and continue producing, which in a commercial setting is not what we want. We wanna go through and keep these plants producing week after week, month after month. Down here on this end where we've got these two tomatoes, they're way too green. The plant hasn't had an opportunity to get sugars and flavor put into these tomatoes yet. Here to our center three, this is gonna go through and be our ideal harvesting window um, with the middle one being the most ideal because we've basically gotten this plant ripe enough that it's got all of the sugars that that plant's going to go through and get into its fruit but it's not developed enough where it's going to go through and send the signals to the plant to go through and start slowing down production. So now we're going to flip these fruit over to go through and take a look at the bottoms. So when I flip the first fruit over, we're still green all the way throughout and we're just seeing the faintest little signs of a yellow star going through and coming into the bottom. And then, then we go to the next fruit and that yellow star is much, much more pronounced. And this would basically be the stage where large commercial growers are going through and harvesting because they want this fruit to be really, really firm. And it'll go through and basically finish um, ripening in the truck as it goes through and gets shipped, you know, hundreds or thousands of miles away. With our small grows, you know, the, the, the growers that Crop King works with, we're not harvesting at this stage. We want to go through and let that sit on the vine a little bit longer, get some more sugars into it so we've got that enhanced flavor. Then we come over here, start to just see this faintest little reddening or get that little color hue in the bottom of the plant. This is where we start harvesting off of our crops in the, uh, in the Crop King greenhouse. Then here, you can, this would be the most ideal. We see that full color that's coming through down around the where that yellow star was. Here, we've got more reddening. And here, we're darker color. And then here, even darker, more pronounced red colors. Again, we don't want to harvest here. We don't want to harvest here. These settings in here would go through and be acceptable to harvest at, with the one here in the center being the most ideal to go through and harvest from the greenhouse. This variety is um, Tommy Maramuchu. And these tomatoes are actually a little bit riper than I would like to be harvesting. Managing these plants to keep them vegetative enough that they keep growing and setting new fruit, but also keeping them generative or reproductive enough is a process, right? So I wanna take these tomatoes off before this stage in a commercial setting. So its whole purpose is to create seeds for the next generation. So if we let the fruit get too ripe on the plant, our future production will slow way down because the plant feels that I've done my job, I've made my seeds, and I can goof off because I've made seeds for the next generation to go through and grow. These look really nice, but they're a little bit late on being harvested um, in a commercial setting. But when we harvest, we put our thumb directly on this knuckle here, and then we just pull the fruit back towards us and it pops off very, very easily. You see how the vine goes through and comes down. And then we've got this gap back here. I put my thumb on that and I'm pulling away from the truss, right? So pulling it away from the truss pops right off good and clean. So when we harvest our tomatoes and we're putting them in the box for storage or for shipping, we wanna go through and make sure we put the clayics down. Basically gives us a relatively flat surface for the tomato to rest on so that it's not rolling around because if they're right side up or the clayx up, they do have a tendency to roll around. And then that post on the clayx can go through and actually poke holes in our fruit, which causes fruit damage and blemish. And we don't want that arrive to our customers that way. So we take the tomatoes and we put them clayx down and put them in their boxes for storage during finished ripening or for when we're shipping them. This tomato is a little bit more what I like to see for when we harvest. You'll see we still got some green, but we've got this nice flush of color so that we know this tomato's already made all of the sugars and all of the sweetness that it's gonna get. It's just in the process of finishing ripening. We don't wanna harvest too early while they're still green the whole way through because that plant hasn't had an opportunity to make all of its sugars to get that tomato as sweet as it'll possibly be. And see that we're only a couple days away because this is what we refer to as the yellow star, right? So you see down here where the flower used to be and we've got this striping of yellowing starting to come off from that point where the flower used to be. That's technically a vine ripened tomato at this point, but we as smaller growers don't wanna go through and harvest that tomato yet. So if I move down the line here, we see this tomato, a little bit still green on top. We've got that red flush the whole way through. That's where I wanna be harvest. Same thing here. We've got that nice blushing. 
this tomato here, again, a little bit too far, a little bit too much red for my liking. But we've got a little bit of reddening starting to come and let that sit for another couple days. So we're at the point to where we're harvesting two or three times a week at this point. So I'll leave this one for another couple days before we harvest. So here we have got our cherry tomatoes and they are not nearly as sensitive to having the ripening fruit on them as our beefsteak tomatoes are. We can see that we've got some much redder tomatoes on here. We let them get a little bit more red on the vine because cherries don't seem to mind letting the uh, fruit go through and get more red on them. So, but it's the exact same way as what we were doing on our beef tomatoes. There's a knuckle on here that we put our thumb on and pull away from the truss, put our thumb on, pull away from the truss, and they pop right off. So here on this variety of Roma tomatoes, you'll notice that there is no knuckle above the calyx. These tomatoes would be suitable for TOV or tomato on vine harvest, which is where we would basically clip this whole tomato truss off and sell that as a bunch. But here at Crop King, we don't sell anything tomato on vines, we do everything loose harvest. And since we don't have that knuckle, what we need to do is come in with our pruners and actually cut that right there just above the calyx. Again, come in with our pruners, Snip just above the calyx. So in the process of making these videos today, we came across a couple of things that I wanted to share with you guys. So this tomato here is an example of cat face. So basically what happens and what usually causes cat face is due to poor pollination. Essentially three quarters of this tomato got well pollinated and then no pollen went through and got to another quarter of it, which then goes through and causes the skin to not form, close that off and we end up with these very unsightly um, open faces or cat faces that we on our tomatoes here. The other one that I came across is basically some cold damage on the skin of the fruit. So this fruit was went through and harvested at the very back of the greenhouse on these nice sunny days that we have when the air's 30, 35 degrees outside. The vent needs to open up and cool the greenhouse, keep it from getting above 78 degrees in here. So what happens is, is the skin of the fruit gets cold, but the rest of the plant, the root system and the leaves are still relatively warm and they're moving water and the plant's trying to put water and nutrients into the fruit but since the skin of the tomato is cold it can expands but then the skin can't go through and grow with it so you get these funny little abrasions and ribs on the fruit which is due to the skin being cold but the roots essentially being warm and wanting it to go through and move water up through the plant. Mm -hmm. 